Welcome to Suzanne's studio. I'm Suzanne Barnett, your host. And tonight I am really hopped up because I am going to interview the executive director of KMVT, and that is my darling, wonderful boss, Ms. Shelley Wolf. Well, thank Shelley, you, Suzanne. You know, I'm a little nervous about it. Why? Because, <laughs> I mean, you know, you're the big hotshot. Oh, it's just a title. No, you are wonderful. Oh, thank you. I have interviewed you before, and all I can say is that I've been at this studio for a long time, and everybody's been great. However, you have really turned this studio around. How did you do that? How did I do it? Yes. Um, well, you know, it's, it's working with my team. I've been blessed to work with so many great volunteers like yourself, uh, as well as my staff, and we just have a great team, and I really, you know, just set foot. We looked, at, we looked at everything that needed to be done, and how do we get out into the community, and we just started making efforts, you know? It's looking at all your constituents, and how do you, how do you build community? And that's what I feel like I'm really good at, is building community and having everyone work together as a team. And it seems to me that you absolutely adore this job. I do. I do. I have never felt like it's a job. You know, people always say, oh, you're there so much. And it's like, you know what? I love my job. The day I feel like it's not a, a job, then uh, I probably am in the wrong job. So I've been very, very blessed to uh, be in jobs most of my life that uh, have allowed me to feel like it's having a good time every day. But Shelly, not only are you executive director of KMVT mm -hmm. here, but you also have another profession, tell us. I do, I do. I have a, a management company as well as an online distribution and retail outlet. Um, so I work with a lot of independent artists and uh, they focus on music, film, art, and uh, authors. So it's a lot of fun and uh, it just, you know, allows me to have a wide range of opportunities to work with all different types of people all across the country. Well, let's just uh, start with how did you get to KMVT? Uh, well, I, I just actually celebrated yeah. almost a year anniversary wow, here. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. So we, uh, you know, I was out in Massachusetts and I was running a public access station out there. And out of nowhere, I saw a job posting and I knew it was time for me to come back to California. I had lived out here about 15 years before and uh, decided it's time to come back. And I just saw the posting and the job seemed right. And uh, I had these amazing interviews. I had a five hour interview <laughs> actually here, here on, on Skype, over Skype from Massachusetts interviewing staff and board members and that sort of thing and they interviewing me and uh, the next thing I know I got a call and said we are interested in hiring you so it worked out very well. Well one of my crew members said that uh, he would love for me to ask you a question. Okay sure. And that is when someone takes the class here Sure. and say it's a uh, housewife mm -hmm. and her kids are in school for a few hours how can you get these people back into the studio? Well, ideally, once they take the class, then they can, um, you know, come in and work on other shows. Mm -hmm. We have shows during the day. Um, we're actually trying to adjust our classes a little bit so that we can serve the moms that are at home or those that are unemployed and bring them into the studio during the daytime to do shows. So, See, yeah, that's yeah. it, because yeah. think of how exciting that would be. Absolutely. Of course, Absolutely. you have to be hands like you and, <laughs> like you and I are, right? Exactly. Right? Well, you know, we have a good time. I mean, we're always wanting to fill our studio. There's a lot of opportunities. I mean, right now we've got over 40 producers that produce programs here. I mean, it's incredible. And so the studio is booked every night. So if we can fill it up during the daytime and offer folks another outlet, um, it's a great way to job train. It's a great way to, you know, get their message out um, and have a lot of fun and meet new people. Uh, Shelly, I want to ask you, if you did not have this position mm -hmm. or your other position, right? What would you be doing? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. I'm always doing different things. I'm yeah. always trying to start different businesses and, and work with others to help launch their business. You know, one of my, I was talking to somebody the other day, I feel like one of my great skills that I do bring to a table is taking a business and looking at a business and, and really saying, okay, how can we expand that business? What does this business need to take it to the next level? And, uh, you know, I think that's where even KMBT was really good for me. It was like we were ready to take it to the next level. And, uh, you know, our last executive director, 
Brian retired, so we were looking kind of for a little bit of new direction, and so it was an opportunity to kind of expand and reach out into the community and, and get out there. Well, let's tell the audience what KMVT provides. Sure, so KMVT provides training. Um, one can come in and do their own TV show. Uh, we work with youth and build media literacy programs around that. Um, we really try to educate people about positive television. You know, in a world that is so mixed with um, television and just you know lots of blabber and you know <laughs> yeah. uh, I guess is the best way to put it like what is television so we really try to put out positive messages and I think what's really great about our producers is that there's always a positive message and there's always information that one can utilize in their lives and I think that that's really key to um, supporting what we do. Um, you know, it is an outlet for freedom of speech. Uh, we are the ones that bring live local election coverage. Um, you know, we do professional video production, so if a business or nonprofit wants to promote their organization, we can help them with that. Um, so we offer a lot of services. We started offering uh, photography workshops, really expanding on what media is, because media is changing so quickly. We also look at ourselves as a true outlet to be uh, an avenue for what we call the digital divide or the zero divide. And what that is is that in a community that has so much technology, um, we look for the opportunity for those that may not get served or are, are considered the underserved, mm -hmm. um, an outlet to really have some new skills that may not have been attached before. So, but do you think that at least 65% of the people know about community access? I don't. I, I don't. don't think so either. <laughs> and it's a real shame. It's a real it shame. So and, you know, what, it's, can, what can we do about that? Sure. Um, you know, we're from our own perspective, we're out there trying every day. I try to uh, educate producers and volunteers as much as possible about the opportunities that they can share with their friends and family and organizations that they work with. Uh, we invite organizations to come in and utilize our studio. So whether it's a service organization or a business that wants to have some team building experience, we invite them in because we want them to understand what we can provide for them and an outlet. I think what happens is people go, oh, you're a TV studio. So, you know, in a lot of ways it's like, oh, it's NBC, I can't go in there. But we want people to come in here. We want people to put their hands on equipment and get that training. Uh, you know, we have summer youth camps. The kids come in, they love it. We have the claymation camps. And a lot of these folks have gone off and worked in professional businesses and uh, production companies and real news organizations. So we're really proud of that, that we can provide an outlet for them to train in that area. And how much does it cost? We're not supposed to yeah. talk about yeah, money, but, well, but know, I mean, it's, it's an inexpe inexpensive cost. That's so, what I mean. Yeah, I mean, like low um, cost training. Yeah, yeah. So, but it really is. Yeah, um, it's, it's volunteer, but it's really, yeah, free. It is. It, it really is. is. Yeah, and I think people should know that. Don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So my staff and I are very good about trying to get out in the community. I think the volunteers are as well. And again, all we can do is try to educate everybody as much as possible. All the great things that we have going on. Um, you know, we're getting ready to upgrade our equipment and go to a digital realm. So. Yeah, tell about the digital. Yeah, so we, uh, in December of last year, we started our first digital campaign. Uh, we are an analog station currently, so for us, it's a, a long time of growth of, you know, 20-year-old cameras and equipment. Excuse me, what is analog? So analog is considered standard. Um, older cables, different, uh, it's just how television was, is analog TV before everything became digital. So it's uh, the old standard, basically. And so what is digital exactly? Uh, that's actually a good question. What is digital? Digital is the new format that everyone's using. Mm -hmm. It's a higher quality. Um, all your TVs now are digital. They're not analogs or tube TVs. You have digital televisions. And so even the cable companies are pushing you to get these digital converter boxes so that you can take in cable. And it's really just new technology is what I it see. is. I see. And uh, so for us, it's really exciting. We've earned a quarter of our uh, budget, or our goal, I should mm -hmm. say. Um, thank you to Los Altos com uh, Council and the Cupertino Council and to our volunteers who've already donated money. We're out there seeking grants currently and seeking other donors to really invest in this and help us be the true service we need to be to the community because sometimes our, we're limited because we just have what's in the studio, we have what's in our truck, but we're mm -hmm. trying to provide not only this as a digital outlet, but also more remote equipment so we can really get out there and, and go and work with the youth and the seniors and, the, and the, just the community in general. So I mean, it's such a wonderful medium if yeah. people only knew, really. Yeah. Well, and you have to remember, video speaks to people. It's telling a story. 
It does. It used to be radio. Yeah, yeah. And now it's video. Yeah. So. I want to ask you a fantasy question. Okay. What if KMBT, just this studio, had an unlimited amount of money, mm -hmm. a huge, huge endowment? You wouldn't ever have to raise money. What would you do? What would I do? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things I would do. I mean, obviously, we would upgrade the studio. Uh, we would upgrade our truck. Um, we would also build remote studios out in the community so that um, places like, for example, maybe teen centers or the senior centers. So it's not everybody having to always come to our studio because mm -hmm. that's one thing we recognize. Not everybody can get here. Mm -hmm. And so where can, how can we provide more within the community? And I think that's our long-term goal is how do we get out into the community and really serve the community to the best of our abilities? Um, whether that's just even teaching what media literacy is, uh, working with kids and teachers to incorporate me media in the classroom, um, working, I've started a program called Intergenerational Mentoring, um, which is a program to really bring all different age people together and, and do storytelling and talk about their lives and share their experiences because there's this also this huge technology gap between the ages and who's using the internet and who knows how to use their iPhones to, you know, oh, those that who would be don't. So, so wonderful. Yeah. And we want to hear stories. We're losing history because of technology. And I think this is an opportunity for somebody like KMBT and Public Access to really get behind and support the idea of storytelling. And how would you go about that, Shelley? Go about what? Story storytelling. Yeah. Um, again, it's you know maybe it's it's again teaching the camera how to use the camera, mm -hmm. um, partnering folks with each other that you know will hopefully be good mentor opportunities for both the youth and the adults, um, but also training and getting their stories out mm -hmm. through that and then recording them and putting them on the air. You really have thought about that. I have. You I really have. have. <laughs> I thought that question was going to stump you a little. I didn't want to stump you, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. but yeah. you're you're already there, girl. Yeah. My head's. Mm -hmm always going. I can't you stop. Are, do you ever sleep at night? Um, sometimes. I have a few hours sometimes, of sleep. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. What do you do yeah. in your spare time? Um, well, I enjoy my family. Um, you know, I have a partner and we go out and we go hiking a lot and uh, and his kids and we like to hike. I like to listen to music and work with bands and so that's my free time. You know, spend time with friends, enjoy good food. Yeah. And you do have some time, do you? It's it's hard to believe. Yeah, that. every now and then, you know, yeah, I get my nails done or then. something. <laughs> maybe, maybe twice a month, right? I always right? used to tell people I love getting on airplanes because it's the one time I can be quiet. I don't have to talk to anybody. That's <laughs> and my head can stop and I can sleep. You know, so. And then we mentioned something about the Wave Awards. You yes. want to talk about that a little sure. bit? Sure. So uh, we're um, our station. Anybody can submit to the Wave Awards, which is the Western Access uh, Video Excellence Award, mm -hmm. and that's part of the ACM, which is the Alliance for Community Media. It's a national organization that helps fight for um, freedom of speech as well as lobby for the public access stations to exist. I'm actually a, uh, a board member for the Western Region, and so we host a conference every year on the Western Region, and they have video submissions. We have 12 finalists this year. We are so thrilled, and uh, every year we've been so blessed to have so many great video products go through, and so this weekend we'll be announcing who the finalists are. So, Why do you think the, the shows are so good here? One, I think our training's good. I think uh, also the volunteers and the producers who put these shows together do an amazing work, and we really take this seriously, and we put our best foot forward in every show we do. So, Here is a question. Okay. What if you have a producer, this person has taken all the classes, mm -hmm. and this producer has a really lousy personality, mm -hmm. And not only that, but that person puts on a terrible, horrible show. What do you do? Hmm. Well, there's not a lot we can do. But what we do from our standpoint is we really try to work with the producers, you know, figure out to make them, why are they here? First of all, that would be my first question. Mm -hmm. If they are being very miserable and volunteers aren't wanting to work with them, mm -hmm. I think the first question is talking to the producer and finding out, like, what's the issues? Mm -hmm. uh, and then really kind of working with them. Uh, we love to give feedback on shows, what works, what doesn't work, um, and then sitting down and critiquing shows if, if a producer wants that. So for us, it's an opportunity to help guide them and the idea of public access and volunteering is we're all working together as a team mm -hmm. and building, building camaraderie and we're all in this for 
a passion that we have. Mm -hmm. So just like yourself, you know, you're coming in and producing and hosting a show. Obviously, there's some love about television mm -hmm. for you. And you pro more than likely have mostly the same dedicated crew. It's because, A, you've created an environment for them. So it's the same at the station. We always try to create that environment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, unless it's a very uh, person who's causing lots of trouble, we're not going to ask them to leave the station. Mm -hmm. But we are going to work with them to mm -hmm. um, find some sort of resolution mm -hmm that makes it a happy working environment for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what what do you envision? Okay, no, I'm going to put it <laughs> I'm going to put it in a different way. Sure. Uh, sometimes I'm sure that there must be difficulties that you have to work with. Sure. How do you work with these people psychologically and emotionally? Um that's an interesting question. I mean, everybody, again, is a volunteer. And so I guess I look at myself as a volunteer as well. And I try to put myself in their position. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've worked in situations where um, we've had to ask producers to leave for different circumstances. We've brought in mm -hmm. conflict resolutions. Um, so it's really just talking to uh, the volunteers and really trying to understand. I think I've been very blessed to be able to work with all different types of personalities. And I think one that helps when you're in a position like mine, um, because when you're working with volunteers, there are so many variables of personalities that are going to come that's through it. the door. And that's so um, so that's where it How starts. How do you stay detached, though? You can't get emotionally involved. No, no. Um, I guess for me, it's more that uh, everyone is a, a form of an acquaintance. So it's if I treat everybody equally, mm -hmm then, you know, that's kind of how it works. You know, everyone, you know, people build friendships and, and relationships throughout, uh, throughout being here, mm -hmm. but I think that's just part of what this is about. And I think the whole goal is we all become one big family and we try to work through whatever the issues are. And, you know, luckily for the most part, we haven't had to deal you with that. So. <laughs> really? No, well, no. we wouldn't talk about it no, anyway, but yeah. probably the fact that I see you as being, I mean, you're very enthusiastic, but you're very mellow, too. Right. What do you do for yourself when you really, really, personal question, you know, when you've had a difficult day and not everybody is <laughs> <laughs> doing what you would like yeah. them to do? How, what do you do for yourself? What do I do for myself? Mm -hmm. Drink a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. No, I mean, I really. try to evaluate. It must be yeah. difficult. I try Shelley. to evaluate it. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's the same as having kids. You know, you're always going to have the issues are going to mm -hmm. come up, and um, as you deal with that, part of that is really um, evaluating. Like, what is it? How does it affect me? How is it affecting other people? And then, you know, just kind of stepping away from it and just going, you know. How do I help these people work together as a team and, and really become one? And again, I guess I just feel like it's something that's come naturally for me, so I don't I don't become over extenuated with it. Yeah. You really you really can't keep yourself detached, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. You really yeah. can't. I think part of it started because when I was younger, I was running a music store and unfortunately I ended up having to fire a very good friend because she ended up stealing from the store. And so for me, uh, it was a, she tried to pretend that um, the place had been robbed and my, the, my boss, I was the second in charge at the time, and my boss had gone out of town. She um, made it look like there was a robbery and um, I ended up realizing it was her and having to fire her. And so I think that at that point made me recognize there's a job and there's an, a friendship. And so I've been able to very much do that. Um, and ironically, most of my jobs have created some of my closest friends. But at the same token, I know my line. So there's work and then there's outside. Yeah. And you can keep them separated. Yeah. 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 What happened to the friend, former We're friend? We're no friends. <laughs> We're no longer <laughs> friends. So. Yeah. But she wasn't worth being a friend, Not was at she? All. Not at all. Not at all. You know. Do you have any uh, examples of something that just has been incredibly, it doesn't have to be at KMVT, but just incredibly important in your life that kind of changed you a little bit? I mean, I don't think we change, but I mean, right. something that really turned you on, um, besides meeting your boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, um, I think just traveling. I love traveling. Oh, tell, tell about yeah. that. 
You know, uh, I was very lucky, um, you know, growing up, I grew up in the Midwest, and so uh, I had a big family. We didn't travel a lot. I uh, usually went to Kansas City, and I think maybe I, I made it to the, the Black Mountains once, but besides <laughs> that, that was it. And, uh, and so when I became of age and really could travel on my own, I just, you know, would drive. And, you know, we would drive to Minnesota or we'd drive into Chicago, and, um, and then I realized, like, there's a whole bigger world out there. And so I landed a job. Um, in San Francisco and in, I guess actually San Francisco was probably the first place that all of a sudden I was traveling all the time and uh, so I've seen most of the country I mean I've got three states left and that's it no kidding. Um, and then um, I started traveling overseas and so and then I moved overseas years ago so where, where did you live I lived in Dublin no in, kidding yeah yeah so, so you are an adventuresome little some people say I'm a, I've got a wandering soul. <laughs> you do, <laughs> so. but yet you're, you stay so focused. Yeah, yeah. Are you a meditator? Yes, absolutely. Oh, you are. I do meditation. I do a lot of yoga, and that helps me stay that grounded. That must be. Mark Isaac Potter should interview me sometime, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So. It is important, it isn't is. it, though? It is. You have to do something for yourself, yeah. really. Yeah, so I would say that's probably what I do for myself when you ask me how I yeah. deal with yeah. tough situations. It's really about meditating because... It helps me stay grounded mm -hmm. and really understand and, again, be able to really look mm -hmm. at all the different personalities mm -hmm. that I work with. And, again, all the jobs I've ever had, you have all different types of personalities. Of so, of you know, so it's really, I've been, I guess, blessed with that from a very young age. So, Since you were, I, I always ask this question mm -hmm. because I think it's so fascinating. When you were a little girl, mm -hmm. I bet, I mean, I'm just assuming this, but that you were just a real go-getter and motivated and did all different kinds of things. Is yeah, that true? Yeah, I would say that's true. See? See? <laughs> you know, it's interesting to reflect back on sometimes yeah. on being young and what I did. And I knew, you know, when I was in middle school, high school, I thought about, you know, joining the military. I really wanted to be in communications. Um, and it really came back to the full circle when I got in television, but I had always been in marketing and sales, so doing communication stuff in the music business. And then when I thought, how did the nonprofit world, ex you know, really expand my life? And I went back to a time when I was um, about seven years old. A girlfriend of mine said we the MDA festival was always on, and we or the Jerry Lewis th telethon was always on, and we always watched that. And she said, I want to do an event in the backyard. We're going to go sell raffle tickets, and we're going to raffle them off, and we're going to donate this money to the MDA. And from that point forward, I got involved with nonprofits. And that, to me, was such a giving moment, and I still support the telethon and MDA and um, two years ago I did a lockup I got locked up in jail and had to call people to you know donate no. money to get me out to support the MDA really and absolutely absolutely have you written a book yet Shelley no but you know I think about it at times what, would, what times. would the title of your book be <laughs> It's a I'm psychological sure. <laughs> question right yeah um, I've almost thought about call it just calling it my journeys uh, there was a, when I was little, there was a movie called uh, The Journeys of Natty Gann, and uh, it was about a young girl who took trains all across the country. And this past year, uh, I just got to take a uh, train across uh, Europe and did the night train from Prague to Poland. And I, th I sat and thought to myself, like, wow, I always dreamed of, of doing that. I'm on my journey. Here I am. So here I am. How wonderful that yeah, is, yeah. really. Yeah. What I have my last question, really, is what advice would you give, yeah, not even young people, but people mm -hmm. that, say, want to start their profession, but they're terrified to do that? How, what would you tell them? What advice well, would you give them? As Eleanor Roosevelt said, you must do one thing every day that you're fearful of. And I agree with really? that. Really? Yeah, I agree with that. Really? Take the risk, because what's going to happen? What's the worst thing that can happen? So that's what you would tell somebody. Absolutely. Just go for it. Absolutely. But how did they? How would they get over that fear? It's of, just having to take that moment and just say, "Say I've got to I do guess. something different." Absolutely. Give an example. Um, that's a, a good example. Um, that's for you because. Sure. I mean, you've done so many <laughs> millions of different well, things. Well, you know, look, I, it, fearful, I was fearful of going and asking people for money. I, you know, I don't like asking for money. I, I, it just didn't seem right. But at the same token, I'm, I'm doing it for a cause. And for me, it was like, what's the worst that can happen? They say no. I move on to the next. 
So, uh, and I feel like I'm stronger because of it. And I set the example of, hey, when they say, yeah, I'm empowered to go and ask for more and to really follow the belief of why I'm here and why I'm doing what mm -hmm. I do. That's such, it's a good way to end the show. Yeah. It really. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much for having me on. It's well, been a pleasure. I think we still have a little more time. We have oh, a couple of minutes. Okay. So, uh, one other thing. How can you, or how can I, talk about KMBT? I mean, of course, mm -hmm. we're doing it right now. Sure. But it's such a wonderful, wonderful... Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's about just host, you know, have an event at your house. You know, when you have a oh, gathering really? over, bring people over and tell them, hey, I'm a producer, check out my show. This is what I do. <laughs> this is what's fun. You know, why? I mean, because why did you get involved? If, if people can, you know, I think our friends want to get involved with things we love and we surround mm -hmm. ourselves with like minded people. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I've, I always made the joke. Um, I did a competition once at one of my stations. I, I told all the volunteers, I said, you know, we'll award you for bringing in friends. No one ever brought in friends. And I used to think, well, why are you not bringing your friends? And they said, well, because we found our friends here that love what we do. And I thought that was an interesting comment. So it was like, okay, well, maybe they don't want to come here, but what can we give back to them? So maybe it's bringing them on the show to talk about their businesses, help yeah. their nonprofits, let them know there's an outlet that we have a free community message board. They can post yeah. information, um, highlight their upcoming events. Um, just again, it goes back to that storytelling. What's the story they have to tell? We all have a story. I would love to interview you one day. I would love to know your story. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it's, it is fun, it except is. as I always say, and this is, I hate to say this, but I think I've gotten really cynical that most people don't want to hear your story. They want to tell, I want to tell my story. Yeah. I can understand. I that. don't like to say that. Yeah. But it's true. Yeah. So how do we get people we could do a show about becoming good listeners. If people could become good listeners, then that would encourage other people. Well, and I think that's part of media literacy. Why I is do too. what is it that why do you watch TV? What does that commercial do for you? What does that show do for mm -hmm. you? Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee the moment ten minutes in the round table will change to how can we make them tell their story and listen to other folks? It's a wonderful way to end. Thank you, Miss Shelley. Absolutely. You are fabulous. That's all I can say. And I'm so glad I'm here with you. Well, thank thank you. you so much. Pleasure. Thank you. And I thank my crew. Boy, do I have a hot crew. And of course, I thank my audience for watching. What would I do without you? And you know something? I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.